Good morning, AYC. <clears throat> Happy Sunday. <laughs> Every day we can be happy, amen? All right. This is going to be my last presentation. for our morning devotion. And my topic has been about devotion, but the new term that I am introducing, which you already know, and that term is meditation. To summarize what I have been sharing with you so far all of us we have four needs yes this is not eight four four okay these four needs are physical social mental and spiritual Physical need is simply, I need to survive. Social need is simply, I need to be loved. And I need to love. Mental need is simply, I need to know. I need knowledge, understanding, wisdom. Then, what is spiritual need? Again, if you ask this question to someone, or if someone were to ask you this question to you, what would you say? What is spiritual need? Some people might say, to live forever with God. Uh, of course, living forever with God that's <clears throat> is a part of the benefit, but just that is still the same idea of surviving forever, right? So what is spiritual need? What is it? <coughs> to be? To meet God. Why do we want to meet God? To be made whole. Why do we... What is missing that we have to meet God in order to be made whole? The reason why we want to meet God is only meeting God will help us to know who we are. When we understand who we are based on God's perspective, then we understand our existence. Then our physical existence, our social existence, our mental existence, all of them make sense. So we know how to fulfill our physical need. We know how to do our social needs. And we know how to get our mental needs. Then how to get our spiritual need fulfilled? Going to church, reading the Bible, praying, listening to a sermon, participating in a Bible study, all of them are good, necessary. However, if meditation element, as I explained to you yesterday, if that element is missing, you may not really meeting your spiritual need. Because spiritual need is what? It's based on, I need to meet God. In order for you to meet God, you really have to open yourself up. In order for you to build relationship with someone, 
You really have to open yourself up, yes or no. Otherwise, your relationship is really superficial, professional, yes? And that is not kind of relationship that God is looking for. God wants complete, total, honest, open, clear relationship. That's how you meet somebody in a personal, intimate way. So therefore, we really have to consider when was the last time I really opened up myself to him? And when was the last time I really searched my own heart? And when was the last time I criticized all my bad character with God's grace? And my suggestion to you is that we can do this, we should do this in our devotion and in our meditation. So then, let's talk about how we should do this. How to have an encounter with God. Number one. Let's make it practical, okay? Number one. What I want you to do is to create a meditation place. Listen, what I'm about to talk to you right now is regarding whenever you want to do something, listen carefully, whenever you want to do something, you have to have place and time. If you don't think about place and time, you will never do it. Do you understand? You have to plan, okay? When you want to meet somebody, do you, do, you, do you try and figure out where, yes or no? Do you figure out what time, yes or no? Yeah, same thing. So create a meditation place. What am I talking about? Somewhere in your house, okay? Uh, some location in your house. I don't know where, maybe in the attic or in the basement in the living room, in the backyard, in, I don't know, somewhere in your house, you can say, I am designating this place to be my meditation place. Are you following? Okay? And you have to declare it. Okay? And that place should be a place where it is a quiet, where you can have a quiet time. A place that is clean. All right, guys. Make sure it's clean. Okay? It should not smell like dirty socks, okay? It should be clean. Smelling good, okay? Number one, quiet place. Number two, clean place. Number three, organized place. Again, clean, organized, the same thing, but organized. Just think of creating your own little sanctuary. But wait, I am not suggesting you should build a little temple in the house, okay? And bringing like, you know, some type of religious statue. And, no, no, please don't do that. I am not suggesting that, okay? But it should be a quiet place, very clean, very organized, and private place where you can have your own personal time. And I want you to call that place your personal holy place. And I really want to recommend to you that you should decorate that place so in a such a way that every time you look at it, the place will remind you this is your private, personal, holy place with God. Amen? I didn't hear amen. What do you think? All right. Now, ladies, you know, you already know how to do this because you're familiar with 
Um, which store is that? Do you have IKEA here? Do you have IKEA? Okay, okay, go there. Okay, spend some money. Okay, invest into this. Uh, how to decorate? That's totally up to you. But it needs to be clean and organized place that feels comfortable. Okay, where you can sit, um, where you can just have your own time. It's going to be your favorite place and favorite time. What do you say? Okay, so spend some money and create your own personal holy place. Here's my, uh, one of the suggestions I would like to give. Maybe it looks something like that. You have nice sofa, you have tables, you know, side to side. Uh, you have this be uh, beautiful uh, nature <laughs> in background. That's nice, huh? Yeah, something like that. A small corner somewhere. Uh, I don't recommend your bed to be your personal holy place. Because you end up having personal holy sleep. Okay, and you wake up and say, good morning, God. All right, so, so I don't recommend that. If you can, somewhere else in your room, somewhere in the house, yeah, you, you give a little special touch. All right? Uh, here's another recommendation. Uh, maybe you like to have your personal space in the, in the backyard, looking like that. Nice? Okay. But my favor is the next picture. I don't have this, but I wish I can have this in the future. It's my favor. You guys ready? Yeah, that's really nice. It looks nice, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, whew, just go in there, spend time with God. Oh, man. All right. So now you got some ideas, yeah? All right. So are you thinking about your place, yes or no? All right. What I want you to do right now, use your notepad, iPhone, smartphone, dumb phone, okay? Bring it out and write down your, uh, your uh, potential place where you like to have your personal holy place. Right now. Write it. Write it. Write it. Right now. Go ahead. Don't look at me. Don't write on my face. Write on your paper. Okay? Right now. Go ahead. Write it down. <laughs> You're, somebody, someone's writing it down for you. Okay. Write it down. Where is it? Okay. Where is it going to be? All right. I just need uh, three volunteers. Shout out your location, please. Three volunteers. Where? Sunroom. Very good. You, have some, you already have some ideas, like how to decorate it, make it look really nice, comfortable. Okay. Anyone else? Shout out. Yeah. In, in nature, just make sure no snakes and no, you know, crocodile or no spiders or poisonous stuff. Okay. But pick, okay, that's, that's a good idea. I guess nearby your house, in nature, okay, you can make a tree house or something. Okay, you, go, you, you figure out. Okay. Uh, one more. One more shout out. Go ahead. Where? Park. I guess you cannot decorate that park. Oh, where you live, there's a little park nearby. Okay, that's fine. If you want to use that, that's totally fine. But it's going to be, yes, designated as your personal holy space or place. Okay, very good. Very good. You're thinking. All right. So we got a place going. Now let's talk about time. Okay? Let's talk about time. When you choose your time, make sure you have adequate sp a space of time. Okay? Now, when... <coughs> and what is an adequate space of time? I want to recommend at least one hour. I know we may have some baby Christians here today, and praise God that you are here today. 
And for some, some of you, you are saying, uh, you are thinking in your mind, I can only do 15 minutes. I can only do 20 minutes. Praise God for that. Continue to do your 15 minute, 20 minute personal devotion meditation. That's fine. However, I want to challenge you to have at least one hour devotion and meditation. Here is a reason why. Process of meditation. You see, our brain normally works like this. First 10 minutes, just preparing your heart. You're waking up, yes? You're getting your thoughts together. It takes about 10 minutes to get all oriented, okay? And then the following 10 minutes, you're organizing your thoughts. So it takes about the first 10 minutes to kind of wake up, okay? And then the following 10 minutes, you're systematically organizing your thoughts, okay? A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. Here are the things that I am thinking about and reading. All right. And then the following 10 minutes, you begin to identify your own needs. All right? And the following 10 minutes, you're receiving answers from the Bible and in your meditation from God. All right? And then, following 10 minutes and more, up to one hour, uh, finishing up your hour, you're abiding in the promise, meaning not only receiving the answer, receiving, in, receiving your answer is important, but abiding, meditating, um, dwelling in that answer for 10, 20 minutes is very important. Okay? As, do not, do not do this. As soon as you get an answer, you're like, okay, my devotion is done, my uh, meditation is done, and you get up and you walk away. Don't do that. Learn to use your imagination, God-given imaginations, to really live in the promise of God. And I will explain to you how to do that a little bit later. So, again, what am I saying? It takes time to really get something out of your meditation and your devotion. If you keep maintaining 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes of devotion, most likely you're just maintaining. Are you with me? Yeah? You're not really growing spiritually. You're just kind of, uh, I'm doing my religious, you know, duty or something. Okay. Here's another chart. Look at this. If you do 10 minutes, it's basically just to get by, really. Again, now, I don't want to condemn, criticize. If you can only give God 10 minutes in the beginning, praise the Lord, and that is sincere, 10 minutes, thank God for that. However, strive to do more, at least one hour. Why? Because, you know, in a general sense, without condemning anyone, in a general sense, 10 minutes is really get by. Uh, 20 minutes, you know, fulfilling your requirement. If you do 30 minutes, like, okay, you're showing that you have interest. If you do 40 minutes, like, okay, you, you are saying, I need this. If you do uh, 50 minutes, it's like, I want to do this. But if you really do for one hour and more, that really shows, and and if you really want to do uh, like one hour or more, that really shows that you have a deep love for what you're doing. Do you ever say to your girlfriend or your boyfriend, time's up, 20 minutes. But how many of you, you looked at your watch when you're doing your devotion? Oh, 15 minutes, that's good enough. That will not help you at all. So then, when you hear this right now, you're thinking, oh, I, I have to do one hour devotion? <laughs> it's only 15 minutes. No, no, no. In the beginning, if you can only do 
from the bottom of your heart that you're really enjoying and you can only do 10 minutes, that's good. And that's all you, if that's all that you can do, stop right there. Next time, don't worry about time. Just focus, just focus on the beauty, the joy, the experience that you're getting from the Word of God. Just focus right there. And let the time be a secondary issue, but your experience with God is so precious, time goes like so fast. And, and later on, you're going to say, oh my, it's already an hour and a half. It felt like 10 minutes. Amen? That's what you want. That's how you really develop a deep, deep love for God. So why do I say this, my friends? According to Psalms 119, verse 97, the, the Bible says, Oh, how, what? Love I thy law. I love your law. It is my what? Meditation all the day. You see, my friends, when you love something, you meditate all the time. And if you meditate something all the time, you end up loving it. Are you with me? Same thing. That's the idea, that it needs to go in, in your system and it just continues even throughout your day. So you, got, you, you have a, a place for your meditation and time for meditation. It can be in the morning, it can be in the afternoon, it can be in the evening, but you choose a time when you can have your good one hour. Are you with me? All right. And I want to suggest, <clears throat> if you have to choose a book in the Bible for your meditation, I want to recommend the book of Psalms. Now, if you decide to choose a book of Numbers, that's totally up to you. Or book of Leviticus, God bless you, okay? <laughs> I'm sure you'll be uh, so... I I'm sure. I, I should not say it like that, but... Um, uh, if you are a beginner, I recommend Book of Psalms. Why? Book of Psalms is really a book of meditation. Okay? And you are not going to run out of, you know, resources. Why? Because the way I like to meditate is not about reading a whole chapter. It's not a marathon. Okay, I'm going to read three chapters today. No, it's not like that. In fact, my meditation is based on just thinking about one verse for one morning. Just one verse. Sometimes one verse for three mornings. How many chapters are there in the book of Psalms? 115. How many verses do you think are there in the book of Psalms? So you, you, you figure out how long it will take for you to finish the book of Psalms if you decide to meditate just one verse at a time a day. So you have plenty, plenty things to meditate on. Of course, you can read other books, no problem, but I want to suggest the book of Psalms because it already kind of, it's already set up in such a way that it's conducive for your meditation, Okay? So book of Psalms, my recommendation. Why? Because Psalms, it says, um, Psalms is really, according to Hebrews, is singing. Yes? Although we don't know the tune, but these words are for singing. And what is a song or singing? It's about expressing your thoughts and your feelings. So when you meditate upon the book of Psalms, you are <clears throat> thinking about Psalms, so to speak, Psalms thoughts and Psalms feelings, Re expressing God's thoughts and His feelings. All right. <clears throat> and then number four, when you do your devotion, learn to search your own heart. And how do you do that? This is how. 
These are the questions that you want to ask. Why am I thinking this? You want to write it down. Why am I thinking this? You always want to figure out the intention and the motive. Why? Because in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12, it says, The word of God is a two edged, you know, sharper than two edged sword, piercing your heart. And it says, It cuts through your intention of your heart. Word of God, the purpose of the Word of God is to sanctify you, cleanse you, wash you, make you all new, but practically speaking, psychologically speaking, emotionally speaking, the Word of God, it shows your intention, your motive. Because my friends, face it, we can do a lot of good things, but if we do them with wrong intention, or our good things is no good. So what we need, revolution, the transformation is really based on changing our intention, our motives. Amen? So when you are doing your personal devotion or meditation, you have to really ask this question, why am I thinking this? What is motivating me? Here we go. Why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling this way? Now, when you ask this question, please be very careful that, listen, when you are thinking about why am I feeling this way, please don't stay there and to only study your feelings. Don't get too involved. You have to, in a sense, step out and say, why am I feeling this way in a very objective way. Don't get all self-pity and down and depressed and, and boo, I'm no good. No, that's not, you know, you're not, you're not being objective. You're just, you know, just being your old self. But it is okay for you to say, why am I feeling that way when my friends are doing so good? Why am I feeling so jealous when so-and-so is getting a better grade? You may think that's oh, natural, but well, think deeper. What is my intention and my motive? Same thing, but these are the questions that you want to ask. Intentions and motives. What is my desire? I like this question. What do I really want? Look at yourself and what do I really want? As a sinner, I know you don't want to think about you as sinner. You want to, you know, forgetting the past. I understand. But we're not talking about dwelling in the past. We're talking about searching your own heart. Amen? We're talking about examining your, your own heart. And you have to really understand what do, what is my desire? What is my wish? Because, listen, it is very common for many of us with our lips, Oh God, make me a good Christian. Make me holy. Help me to read the Bible more. But in our heart, we have totally different desire. And the way we deal with that, ignore it. I understand. Your, your act of ignoring it, you're thinking that I'm living by faith. You know, I'm denying myself. That's all, that's, that is really based on your good intention. But when you are trying to deny yourself, sometimes, my friends, you have to know exactly what yourself is. So you got to be able to identify it. Not just simply, uh, easily just, okay, my, just my awful self, whatever it is. I, I don't want to think about it. No, identify it. This is what confession means. Remember, when we, do, when, we have, when we need to have revival, revival is always based on confession and repentance. Confession, acknowledging our sin. Repentance, turn away from our sin. But in order for you to turn away from your sin, you got to be able to acknowledge your sin. However, in order for you to acknowledge your sin, you got to be able to identify exactly where your sin is.
And then, what do I really want? Same thing. What's my desire? What do I really want? Okay? So please. Oh, God. In your, with, with your lips. Forgive my friend for what he's doing to me. Oh, God, have patience upon him. May the mercies of God and the blood of Jesus pour over him. You know, with your lips, you're saying like this, but in your desire, in your, what you want, you're really saying, oh, God, kill him. Yes or no? So what happens is, with your lips, oh, God, please forgive him. No, 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 let me t- help me to love him. But you're just humanly, using your human force, kind of press down your, your human desire for killing him. You press it down. Hope that it will go away. Hope that it will be ignored. Hope that somehow you transform. No. It is your duty to say, God, right now my heart says kill him. That's my desire. What should I do? Change me. But many times, oh, I want to kill him, but I don't want to think about that. If I think about that, I'll go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. So, I, oh, okay, I want to go to heaven, so forgive him. Forgive him, so I go to heaven. We're all happy. <laughs> yes? We do this, yes? Right? Okay. What do I need? We got to figure out my desire, my want, but the same. But at the end, you got to be able to say, what is, I, what is my need? Okay? This is a sample of how you need to search your own heart. Ask these questions. You may, warning, when you ask these questions, warning, you may discover something that you didn't know before. But it's going to be a pleasant experience. All right, so learn to search your own heart. And then learn to embrace God into your heart. And that is my favorite part. Let me explain to you what I am talking about. Let's say you're reading book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 23. And the Bible text that says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not what? Want. And just stay right there. You may say, oh, that's so boring, just one text. No, stay right there. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Remember, listen, before you get into more of a spiritual meditation aspect of your devotion before you get into more spiritual area you gotta have intellectual understanding so you gotta go through okay what is this bible text saying what's the subject what's the object what's the main purpose what's the topic what you understand it's a little more academical it's a little more intellectual but you gotta go through that don't just jump into I just want to feel really good from this Bible text, even though I have no idea what this Bible text is saying. So you got to understand what the Bible is saying first before you can really appreciate what it is talking about emotionally. You understand? So don't jump into, you know, I want something emotional. No. Even though the text may be so simple that you think it's going to be so easy for you to get the emotional and spiritual benefit from the text, but stop and look at the text intellectually first. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? Okay, so when you look at the text, of course, we can spend seven days regarding how to study the Bible, but we don't have time to do that. So here is my... Fast, quick suggestion. When you have Bible text like this, choose 
the most important words. What are they? Choose most important words in the text. What are they? I hope you are not choosing the. If you choose the, I will say to you the. Okay? Uh, the first one should be what? Lord, and then? Shepherd, and? Um, at this time is a phrase, that's fine, that's okay. Not want. That's very good. So, here we have Lord, Shepherd, not want. You see? My choice, your choice, is about the same. We pretty much think the same, okay? Here are, so here are three important words. So therefore, you focus on those three important words. You with me? After that, choose one to be the main one. Which one? Choose one that is going to be the main. And how do you decide which one should be the main one? Choose the one that is going to... Basically, it's the best summary of the text. Best summary of the text. So watch this. Verse, uh, Psalms, so if you have a hard time choosing which one, say it like this. The main word for Psalms 23 verse 1 is Lord. Does it help you to understand what the text is talking about? It's about Lord. That seems to be too broad. So, no. How about this one? To, uh, Psalms 23 verse 1 is about shepherd. Pretty close, yes. I think that's, that's okay. And what about this? Psalms 23 verse 1 is about not want. Or you can say no lack. That's pretty close. Again, in this kind of exercise, there is really no right answer, wrong answer, but it is the, uh, it's the attempt to get close to the main word because when you study a text, you have to have a focus. You've got to have a focus. Okay, so keep that in mind. So then, what do we do from here and onward? So we, you put Lord, shepherd, not one. And what you, what you might want to do at this time is to um, understand them based upon Hebrew definitions. Because this is Old Testament. So, Lord means Yahweh, self-existent, eternal, name of God, the Lord, okay. It's pretty obvious, but go ahead, go through the process. Intellectual understanding. Shepherd, to tend a flock. Pasture to graves, companion, keep com company with, make friendship with. That's interesting, isn't it? Okay. We have these additional definition that gives us additional, bigger picture. Not want, to lack, to fail, one lesson, decrees, uh, decrees, Fail, lack, make, lower, okay? So it's really not decrease, not fail. All right. So here are the Hebrew definitions. Now, so what you have done is you have this intellectual understanding of these words. And now what you need to do, my suggestion is turn them into more spiritual. And you're thinking, how do you turn... Text like that, those words, into more spiritual. How do you do that? It's very simple. Because our spirituality is really close to our heart. And our heart is really it's about what we think and how we feel. So, turn these words into more feeling terminologies. Words that expresses more feeling. So this is how. Lord. How do you feel when you understand about Lord? You already know he is self-existent. You know, he is master. How do you feel? So you got to think about it. Lord. Strong. Interesting. I have that definition. Strong. 
So here are my choices. God, eternal, dependable, strong, master. I'm finding words that I can readily, easily feel. Okay? And then shepherd. We already have a definition. Fr a companionship, make friends with. How do you feel? If you have a hard time coming up with other words, just sometimes just copy the original definition. Friend, companion, compassion, and you think of companion, friendship, tender, loving, patient, kind, and then not want. How do you feel? What other emotional definition can we give? Not want. No lack, no defeat, no worries, confident, happy, no stress. So when you have these definitions are basically the same as the original, but now you have words that you can relate better. So then you can say like this. Instead of saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, Say it like this. Reading the text the same way. The Lord, dependable, strong, master, God. Are you with me? When you think of dependable, strong, master, God, how do you feel? You feel safe, yes? Right? So you have this feeling of safe. And then you go, the Lord is my shepherd. So you say, Dependable, strong master God is my friend. Tender, loving, patient, kind friend. How do you feel? How do you feel? Not only you feel safe, but you feel how? You feel well protected, cared for. Do you feel good, yes or no? Okay. And then you say, the Lord who is eternal, dependable, strong, master, God, he is my shepherd who is my companion, compassion, tender, loving, patient, kind friend. Because of that, I shall not want, meaning no defeat, no worries, and I like this, no stress. And what you need to do is when the, when the Scripture is dwelling in your heart, where you can relate it emotionally, spiritually, you just let it sit there until your whole being can feel the power of the Word of God embracing you. Many times, we just read the Bible text, and we get this good inspiration slightly, slightly, very, just little taste. And we say to ourselves, oh, that's good enough. Let's go. Let's start our day. Learn to get something and stay there. Let your God-given imaginations to think of God who is eternal, strong, but at the same time, He's very tender, compassionate friend. And because of Him, I have no worries, no lack. And imagine what it feels like to... Be without worries. Imagine. What is, what is, what is it like to be, to be like you, are, you have no stress and no worry? And do you feel peace? Do you feel the life is in control? And stay right there. And let these feelings just go through in your mind, in your heart, and you keep thinking about it. 
Stay right there and thank God for the Word of God. That's what the Bible says. Do you believe what the Bible says? Our God is our shepherd. And if we have Him, we can live our life as though we have no worries. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that? So then, at that time, now, do you understand the Bible text intellectually? Yes. Do you understand the Bible a little more emotionally and spiritually? Yes. At the time, what should you do? This is what you should do. Like this. God, thank you for your promise. But then you got to search. God, what is causing me to be stressful? What are my worries? And why are they my worries? What is causing me to say they are my worries? Why I am so stressed about that particular situation? Do I have to react that way? Do I have any other option? If I really believe what the Bible says, is there a way that I can live and feel and walk and, and stand in such a way that I do believe in the Bible? Do you understand what I'm talking about? And then search your own heart, and you may discover something like this. My worry, my, what's my worry? What's my trouble? What is my problem? My problem, I'm searching my own heart. Uh, my problem is my friends don't like me sometimes. And then you got to search. Why is it they don't like you? You got to be honest. Don't be blind. You got to be honest. Listen to what your friends are saying sometimes. I know they can exaggerate and they can you know, say things in an extreme way, but listen. Then you discover you, your friends don't like you because you talk too much. God, <laughs> then you go. Don't excuse yourself. God, don't say, I mean, I'm a human being. I got to talk. I got to exp express myself. So what's wrong with that? No, 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 no. Just say, why is it that I, I talk too much? And then you may discover the reason why you talk too much, because you are insecure about yourself. And then you ask the question, why am I insecure? And then maybe, maybe, just maybe, you may discover the reason why you, you feel so insecure because the way you live your life, what am I talking about the way you live your life? The way you live your life meaning the way habitual thoughts that you keep repeating over and over and over, over again, let on those repetition became your character, it molded, it became you, and you think you're stuck with that character. And when you go back to the, the way you repeated things in the past, it's just maybe the way you grew up in the family. And then maybe you discover, I feel insecure today because the way I reacted to my mom, my father, based upon how they talked to me. And then you discover you are still holding grudge against your parents. Just an example. So you really bring the Word of God into your life. Or maybe your trouble is your co-worker. Every day that particular co-worker really gives you stress. You don't like to see that face. You don't even really hear that tone of the voice. You don't even want to smell that person. And God, I'm so stressed because of that person. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. With because you are dependable, strong, master, God. You are my companion, my friend, tender, compassionate. Friend, I shall not have any worries, no stress. God, surround me with your presence, with your power, 
And then, in your devotion, your meditation, God, the reason why I'm so stressful, because I'm, I always feel inferior or bothered by that person. God, because you are my shepherd, I choose not to feel inferior or superior. I just want to feel I am safe, protected, accepted in God. With that feeling, give me heavenly confidence. Give me heavenly love. Give me heavenly presence. And you stay right there and imagine what it's like to meet your friend again, meet your friend again, and at the same time, you have this heavenly presence based upon Word of God growing in your mind, in your, in your body, in your heart, in your, everywhere, about, I mean, everywhere about you, and then meet that friend. Imagine what it's going to be like to see new you and observe standing with humility, understanding, kindness. A little bit of, because you're human, a little bit of difficulty of, yeah. However, with smile, genuine smile, with love, Showing patience to your friend. Imagine yourself as a new creation in your devotion, in your meditation, and stay right there until you can see new you in Christ. And stay right there, and then thank God, praise God, and then you do your prayer, repentance, confession, and you get up, when you get up, Pick up that presence. Pick up that atmosphere of holiness of God and the, the Word of God surrounding you. Embrace it and start your day. And then go to your workplace. When you go to your office, that person is coming to you. At that moment, you go, God, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And so you say, with confidence, with humility, with hope and love, you look at the person with genuine smile, good morning. God, do your miracle in my life because I want to meet you this way. Amen? Are you understanding? When was the last time you had a devotion, meditation like this? Now you understand perhaps what was missing in your life. How many of you are excited about this kind of meditation? Oh, praise God. How many of you are so excited you cannot wait to go home? Not many hands went up. How many of you are so excited that you cannot wait to go home and do this and practice this? Let me see your hands. Amen. How many of you have a place already designated? Okay, good. Some are still thinking. Okay. How about time? You got a time? Time and place? Let me see your hand. Come on. Very good. Very good. You have chosen a book? Okay. Book of Psalms. Okay, Leviticus. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, maybe one or two, one or two. God bless you, God bless you. <laughs> Let me know how it goes. Yeah, don't give up when you go through a burn offering, okay? Don't burn out, okay? All right. Very good. Um, now you know about searching your, your how, ma how many of you are excited about searching your own heart? It's, it is, because you know why? When you do that, when you come out of that, you are going to feel more cheerfully, more healthy. You're going to have a glow on your face, inner peace, because you know, you understand, you have more focus. So if you're excited about doing this kind of devotion, meditation, and now you understand this is how we feed our spiritual need. 
Not just going to church. No. Not just singing the songs. No. They can help. But really, where, where the, meat is, the, the meat is, meditation. Study all the great characters in the Bible. They all had this, that internal, intimate encounter with God, with human struggles. That's natural. It should be that way. So then, let me ask you something. How many of you are so excited about this way of doing devotion meditation? You are willing to share with other people. Let me see your hands. God bless you. Here's my appeal for today. I want to ask. This is not for everybody. This is not for everybody or everyone. I'm asking only to those who have, who have not been doing devotion, meditation, spending time with God. You know, um, Sometimes this life is so difficult because we got to survive. And because of that, that really grabs our attention. But if you really want to be made whole, to be really happy, you really have to pay attention to your spiritual need. So I want to ask you, How many of you, those that have not been doing devotion and personal meditation, to those people, would you like to make a commitment today to say, God, I am not sure it's going to be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or 40 minutes, or one hour in the beginning, but one thing is for sure. I want to have this genuine, intimate experience with you because I miss you. I miss that time. I miss that precious hour. I miss that take time to be holy. And I need it because I have not been, I was doing something else. But I really need you. So help me as I make my commitment. Only promise I make, God, is that I want to turn my desires to you to spend time with you. If you're that person, please stand where you are. God bless you. Again, it's not for everybody. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And to those that are sitting, perhaps you've been doing devotions already, but then past three days, including today, you have learned something new, a deeper way of doing your meditation and devotion, and you're saying today, I want that experience. If you do, stand up. God bless you. And today, <laughs> we want to have a special prayer. Because I understand there are times that we don't want to do our devotion because we have a sin problem. If we have our devotion, our sin is going to appear itself in front of our face. And we don't want that. So how many of you here today, you want to be free from that? I, you don't want that bondage anymore, that slavery anymore. God, with my sin, I come to you. Do my devotion and my meditation. And I'm seeking the blood of Jesus to wash away my sin. 
And I want to make that commitment today. Oh God, take away my sin and help me to spend time with you. If that is your desire, please, let's have a special prayer. Come to the front. God bless you. God bless you, sister. So you're saying, I have a, I have a major sin in my life, a, a secret sin, a sin in my life, and that has been holding me back from doing this personal time, personal devotion with God. But I don't want that to hinder me anymore. I want to have a clear relationship with God. God bless you. Come close, come close. Press together. God bless you. We're going to have a very special prayer. Because my friends, evangelism is all good. AYC is all good. All the beatings are all good. But if we don't have our personal time with God, Nothing is really good. You understand? So since this is the last AYC, since this is the last morning devotion, if you can take something home from this, that you go home and meet God. Amen? God bless you. And here's my final challenge for 2014. If you really like what you've been learning, I'm sure you have a desire to share with other people, yes or no? So here's my challenge to you. How many of you are willing to share what you learned, how to do devotion and meditation, and help somebody to have that experience? If you'd like to help 30 people this year, that's around three people every month. 30 people this year, three people almost every month. If you like to make that, if you like to give yourself that challenge, because you want to help other people to meet God, if you do, I want you to come up on the stage at this time. God bless you. You want to share this to 30 people if you want that challenge. You know why I say this? More you share, it's going to be better for you. Amen? God bless you. God bless you. Hey, if, if you want to share, if you, if you still want to share, but 30 is not the number, that's fine. That's fine. These people are not going to get bigger trophy because of this. If you want to share to one, two, ten people, no problem. Still good. Amen? But I just want to give you a high challenge. Wow, this is going to be wonderful. This will create revolution. It's going to create revival, reformation. Really. Because it truly meets our need. Our greatest need is not feed me. Our greatest need is not really I don't have friends. Our greatest need is not really, I need education. Our greatest need is, who am I? And God, who are you? And what is the purpose of my existence? If we know this, everything will take care of itself. Amen? God bless you. I want the, the committees, the prayer group to come up. And we're going to have prayer time. What I'd like to do right now is to uh, get into groups of three or four, not more than four. You can stand, kneel, doesn't matter, and pray. Pray that we will carry on. Pray that we will go on. Pray that we will have this experience. That this will be the best souvenir you will take from AYC and it will be forever in your heart so let's divide ourselves into groups of three or four and pray 
And when you hear me pray, you can finish your prayers. Let us pray. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you have done through AYC, through all the speakers and all the programs, not only this year, but all past 10 years. And Father, we have heard the thunder. We have seen the fire. We felt the wind. But help us not to forget still small voice that will speak to us morning from morning. When we wake up, help us to hear the tender, sweet voice of God as we open your word and help us to meet you in a genuine, personal, and intimate way that we may have the presence of God dwelling and embracing us wherever we go, that we may be victorious and we may be champions for truth and righteousness and love, that we may have the strength to turn the world upside down. We thank you. According to thy word, so let it be. This we believe in the name of Jesus. Amen.